Can I ask you, because you have spent a long time trying to rebrand your party to the extent that here you are on the verge of, of potentially taking power in government, but there's still a lot of troubling statements from members of your actual current party, including people who are currently, uh, you know, candidates for, for this election. Like, North Africans came to power in 2016. These people have no place in high places, in high positions. Uh, ministerial positions must be held by Franco-French people, un point c'est tout. I mean, then there was a very uh, unfortunate image of a uh, mixed-race child in Brittany uh, carrying a Breton flag, and then there was racist uh, insults, and then this candidate put a white face, and he, he labeled it true Brittany, false Brittany. Madame, there are... No, I just want to ask you, is this acceptable now, in the today's RN? We had to put forward... We had to come up with a thousand candidates in 48 hours. A thousand candidates. A thousand candidates in 48 hours. Let's be very clear. Jordan Bardella said very clearly that people who have made unacceptable comments will be brought before the movement's conflicts commission and will most certainly be excluded from the movement, as others have been in the past. See, I mean, I think that in any political movement, there can be what we call black sheep. These people are still... OK, I'm telling you, and it's not me telling you, this is in the French press. Will they be expelled? I'm not contesting the existence of these comments. I want to explain that, in response to these comments, our party immediately initiated disciplinary proceedings against the candidate. And as a general rule, they are excluded because of these remarks. Other political movements who also have candidates who make unacceptable remarks, rather than excluding them, they actually protect them. They cover them up. And I think that's what we need to look at. Yeah, but I just want to know, will these people be excluded? Will they be expelled? They are already facing... No, they're running right now. They're now candidates. These names. Madame, Madame forgive me. We have certain procedures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've got an election in no, three but, days. Madame, forgive me. But that's not my vision of justice. We have statutes whereby people in this situation must be called before the Conflicts Committee, and they will be. There is a 21-day delay, but believe me, the jurisprudence of our commission is extremely tough, and we do not let this kind of language slide. Let me get to foreign affairs. Uh, you have in the past said things that cause people to worry about you regarding, for instance, Putin. You have talked about how, you know, Crimea, you said it to me, was always Russian. You said the sanctions on Putin should be removed, those that were put on him for uh, annexing Crimea and invading uh, parts of Ukraine. Now he's fully invaded. Are you committed to the victory of Ukraine? Will France keep supporting Ukraine against this illegal invasion? Do you call it an illegal invasion? And will France continue to provide Ukraine with, the, with, with weapons to defend itself? Madam, I think we can consider that the situation in Crimea was much more complicated than it is made out to be. But that has nothing to do with what Russia did now. What Russia has done here is violate Ukraine's territorial sovereignty, violate Ukraine's freedom and bring war to Ukraine. From the outset, we have condemned Russia in this matter and we have supported Ukraine throughout these two years indicating that we have two red lines which were sending French troops to Ukrainian territory because the French are, I believe, totally opposed to this and the delivery of long-range weapons that could hit Russia and therefore make France a co-belligerent in this conflict. What did you make of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Russia today tweeting that the people of France are seeking a sovereign foreign policy that serves their national interests and a break from the dictate of Washington and Brussels. They're talking about your potential, you know, head of government. They seem to be saying they welcome you coming to power. Does that bother you? I don't feel like I need to be held accountable for Russian provocations. I mean, writing that tweet 
I don't know if it's revenge against Emmanuel Macron, but what's certain is that it's a form of interference. And in that sense, I find it unacceptable. I think it's a provocation. Jordan Bardella has said that only with an absolute majority would he accept to lead the next government. If you do not get an absolute majority, will the RN take up the prime ministership? If we don't have an absolute majority, we'll try to find one. In other words, we're going to turn to a certain number of MPs who weren't elected with us, but who might agree to support the policy we want to pursue and thus form this absolute majority. If we don't succeed, I mean, Jean Badera isn't going to agree to be prime minister just to have the prime minister's name on a business card. If he can't do anything, if he can't get any laws passed because this absolute majority hasn't been found, then there's no point in agreeing to go into government. It would even be, how can I put it, a form of betrayal of the electorate because voters elect us to do something, to change Emmanuel Macron's policies, not to sit on comfortable armchairs behind, behind Louis XV's furniture to manage current affairs. Final question. The fact that your party did so well in the European elections, and so did Georgia Maloney's party, and so did AFD. I mean, you know, AFD, as you know, a little bit like the former National Front, is very scary. The fact that the far right is becoming a very, very powerful force in Europe, and who knows, maybe now, with all that's going on in the United States, Donald Trump might win a second term. How do you see Europe changing? First of all, I strongly dispute the term far right, which in your country refers to small groups that are extremely radical and violent. If you like the equivalent... You don't think, you, you don't think you're far right? The equivalent of what we are in the United States is between the center right and the center left with regards to ideas. So I think this... You're kidding me, right? Yes. Yes, I'm telling you very honestly. I think this use of the term far right carries a stigma and is very pejorative. It does not correspond to what we are and not at all to what the far right is in the United States. That's the first thing to say. Secondly, we can't put everyone in the same boat. For example, in Europe, we distanced ourselves from the AFD party because we're in total disagreement with a number of their statements. So together with Mrs. Maloney and with our differences too, are what we call patriots. In other words, we defend the existence and the power of nations within the European Union because nations are the expression of the French people. When the European Union takes on certain roles without consulting anyone, it is no longer democratic. We are defenders of nations. We want a Europe of nations, a Europe that respects the decisions of the people and not a super technocratic structure such as it exists today. And that's the path that we want to follow, a Europe of nations that's respectful, that leads projects, a Europe that doesn't restrict, that doesn't threaten, that doesn't blackmail when it comes to subsidies. Because that's not our vision. Our Europe is the Europe of Airbus. Forgive me, it's a competitor. It's the Europe of Ariane. It's not the Europe of Madame von der Leyen. And so we will fight within Europe to redirect Europe in the direction that we want. Would you like to see Donald Trump win again? It's not for me to comment on American politics because I'm respectful towards democracy. It's up to the Americans to decide. They're the best place to decide who should defend them and ensure the prosperity of the country. I have a lot to do myself in France without having to comment on elections that are taking place abroad. Marine Le Pen, thank you very much for joining us. C'est moi qui vous remercie de votre invitation.